Okay, I've got about 193 miles to go, about three hours, and that's Great Basin National Park. It is absolutely beautiful. You drive all the way up into that mountain, go over the mountain, you're in the other side in Baker, and uh, it's between Eli and Baker, and, excuse me, sorry. Oh, my throat is still tingly. <coughs> So one of the uh, one of the peaks, probably the top one there in the middle, is Wheeler Peak, and you can actually hike all the way to the top from uh, the campground, the Great Basin Campground. Um, and I stayed there last year; it was the first uh, national park on finishing the country when I was here in um, May of last year, or June of last year. So yeah, one of my favorite, in my top ten favorite national parks, and I definitely want to go back. I don't have time today because I do have to keep going, um, but if I had an extra day, I would stay here if they had a campsite available, but it is absolutely stunning. And they have cave tours and everything. So that said, uh, let me continue on my 190 miles and I'll catch up with you when I'm in St. George. Okay, I was stopping to get gas and they have a pie company and bakery. So let's see maybe if they have cake, that would be awesome. Otherwise I'll just keep going to St. George. I'm only about 20 minutes, but I need gas. We only have a hundred uh, miles left. So let's go in here. Let's see what they have. They don't have anything, they have pie. I don't think they have cake. Anyway, they have a lot of people coming from different places. Okay, unfortunately they only have pies and I don't want pie, it has to be chocolate cake. So I'll keep going. There's a little um, smaller grocery store called Digsby in uh, St. George that looks like they might have a nice little bakery there. So, okay, let me go in. Okay, I've made it to Digs, Digby's Market. My throat is feeling better. My voice is slowly coming back. Oh, that's funny. A little motorcycle car thing. Anyway, um, there's a really, really good bike trail from here that goes from the Snow Canyon Park where I did the uh, Scout Cave hike um, like a week and a half ago. So they also have ice cream. And let me go in and see if they have cake. Ooh, $1 Sunday ice cream. I think ice cream would be good for my throat. I've never been in this market before, never heard of it. So yeah, let me see if they have, um, I need to get a few things. So let me see if they have uh, some chocolate cake. It has to be fully chocolate. It can be fudge, but it's gotta be fully chocolate. So there's popcorn, there are treats, and there's a bakery somewhere. Bakery is over here. It's just your regular supermarket. Honey, oh, I don't like honey. Um, they have a deli area. They've got prepared foods, cheese, Actually, cheese would be good. A little, like, charcuterie board. They have donuts, but I don't want donuts. I want a little, little chocolate cake. Do they have one? They do. Oh, my God. Perfect. Okay. That's chocolate peanut butter, though. That might be okay. That might be fine. Okay, I think chocolate peanut butter is okay. Okay, I think that one's fine. Let's see what they have over here. They have bigger chocolate cakes. It's just me. And I'm not gonna be able to eat everything. And they've got palm trees with Easter rabbits on it. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Let me ring the bell. All right, so no Cracker Barrel tonight. This is BLM in Santa Clara, or Santa Clara, which is a cute little town right next to St. George. It's like 10 minutes away. And this is my home. And also my friend Mark from Instagram is gonna join me. So this is my view. This is just a dirt road. There's a housing uh, development down there. And this is BLM. Holy shit. That's awesome. There's a fire pit as well. Okay, this is my spot for the night. It's about 10 minutes up the road from Santa Clara, um, which is a cute little tiny little town, antique shops and everything, like about 10 minutes from St. George. There's a new housing development right over there. It's chilly and there's Prudence and some other person and my friend Mark from Instagram who has the craziest rig. It's like a hydraulic box truck. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, he's going to join me. I think we're going to go hiking tomorrow. So I've been to Zion twice and I've been to Bryce three times, but Cedar Breaks is also up in this area about an hour and a half from here. So I think maybe we'll do one of those hikes tomorrow. And then, yeah, so this is it. We have fire pit right there. Oh, it's cold. Okay. And then this is my spot. So this is great. This is better than Cracker Barrel because he has a roof, rooftop tent and I have a van so I can park anywhere in town, but a rooftop tent's probably not good to park on the side of the road around a Cracker Barrel. Anyway, so this is it. There's someone else down there. They're probably hiking or sleeping, but this is great. So the BLM sign is literally 
right there. And so right when you come off the dirt road, so there's a housing development, there's a little dirt road, you gotta kinda go up a little bit, like really whole ass, just up this little part. And then the BLM starts right there. So there it is. Okay, I'm freezing cold, I want a cup of tea. And I think I'm out. No, I got everything I want. I'm gonna go make a cup of tea. morning we're heading out to the hiking trail so it was very cold last night he was in his rooftop tent and I was in my van so now I'm gonna go down this sketchy road and we're gonna go make sure there's nothing up there hang on a minute hang on. one second oh, I'm gonna take the book down Got Harriet's book <laughs> anyway um so yeah we're gonna go hike for about five six miles and it should be fun. So yeah, beautiful BLM spot. We've got a couple other neighbors. Um, the road isn't too sketch, but this is like a future housing development. So now we're gonna drive um, about 10 minutes to the hiking trail and go hike somewhere. <laughs> so anyway, it looks like a little cloudy today. It's a little cool. And we had the fire going last night, um, but it was freezing. I was so cold last night, uh, but we'll stay another night and hopefully it's not gonna be too bad. But yeah, so back in St. George, it's so pretty here. So many hidden gems. And I'm being followed by a four-wheel drive as I'm trying to do two-wheel drive down this road anyway. Okay, let's go. Okay, we're at Snow Canyon and we're parked like this because we know each other. And we're going to try to figure out whether we can use our spiffy little Utah park passes to, uh, to go in for free. I think so. I think we just, yeah, I think we just register our card. So this is the card that they gave me at the other, uh, at the Kodachrome Park. So I think I'm, it's good for... Every state park, I assume. I don't think we have to pay. I don't think this is the city park. It's bizarre. It's like, we have come to your earth. <laughs> This is the slot canyon here. Let's see. Looks like a horse training. A little faster than we are. Yes. We're very we're very special and important, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. No problem. I uh, held on each side and then I just jumped down to each ledge. So, yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah, they just went right down here. They, okay, I'll be right there. Go yeah, I'll go down. Here. Don't, Don't wait for me, though. I'll be right there. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I don't mind you want to throw your bag to me? No, I want to do it with my bag on like you did. Oh, boy. Did they went all the way down to the bottom? Yeah. That's cool. There's a cavern down there. Scott, are you down? Yeah. 
Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, it's so cold down here. It's great. I know. It feels good. <laughs> Oh, be careful. This one's, this one's different, Mark. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, this one in their picture. Nobody cares about Megan and Chris's, like, yeah, I don't know, graffiti. <laughs> I didn't see him, no. <laughs> They're cute. They're chicken nuggets of the cave. It's coming right in my face. Dude, that was... And then do this one on the way back? Yeah. Oh. I mean, you could try to climb down. Oh, no, we can get down. Yeah, we can get down. Yeah, I can hear the voices from the other end. Yeah. So they're not like animals or anything? No, no. Although sometimes, sometimes you will get a, uh, a burrow like this. This here was probably an impression from a from day three in St. George I'm leaving and the entire US Forest Service is out here on public land and for some reason I still have a raspy voice <laughs> sorry about that anyway so put it there very very oh very very bumpy road so I am now heading to Las Vegas so I'm done with this leg of the trip pretty much I'm gonna go to Las Vegas for a few days and um, go hang out with some friends and do some admin stuff I have a couple zoom calls on Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon that I have to be in my computer. So I will do that. Um, and then I'm flying out on Friday morning to go home for the weekend. So it's been fantastic. The hikes yesterday were great. This BLM is fantastic. There's lots of other little spots you can stay in. And last night, uh, my friend Mark and I, cause he was a, oh, hang on a minute. He was a, um, I think a F-18 fighter pilot <laughs> in, the, in the Air Force. So I was showing all these like fighter pilot videos, but had all this, um, military stuff and I was uh, I was in the army so I'm fascinated by all like you know Kevlar helmets and 
um, scopes and like night vision stuff. So we were checking out all like in night vision, like all the animals, all the falling stars, all of the, um, oh my God, it was so funny. Like you could see, like it was like daylight, even better than daylight. You could just see everything going on at night. You could see airplanes. And then there was an app he had where you could just like, it's like Shazam for airplanes. So you like hold the, um, hold the phone up to the sky and it will show you what airline is flying by. It's really, it's really big brother. Anyway, so now I'm going down this sketchy road and I'm heading to uh, Starbucks first to get uh, some ch chai and a frappuccino. I'm going to chai and a frappuccino so I have a two hour drive and then heading into um, Las Vegas. So yeah, and then I'm just going to get a pedicure and I'm going to get some pampering, clean myself up a little bit so that I can be back in civilization. It should be a fun couple days. I'm actually going to go see Beatles Love again for the third time. So I don't know. There's nothing wrong with my throat, by the way. I just have a sore throat. I think from... Uh, I think it's ever since I hiked the wave, I think I just like hiking in that, um, you know, the sand and everything. But anyway, so I'm going down this road right now, totally sketch. I came up this other road, like barreled up the, up the thing. And then last night, cause we camped out here. So uh, Mark has a, a tent on top of his uh, rig and I have the van, but there was another van that looked like mine. And so, uh, and my bike is on the back now. I managed to get the door open. And he was like, he was like following the other van. I was like, that wasn't me. I have a bike on the back of my van. So anyway, um, so he's like, where'd your bike go? I'm like, my bike is still there. Anyway, so yeah, there's lots and lots of places to camp out here. Eventually, eventually this is going to be a housing development. But St. George is just blowing up. It's such a pretty, 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 pretty place. And um, yeah, so I think also when I'm in Vegas, I'm gonna try to get my other friend that I'm staying with to uh, fix the door because everyone I know is very handy and I went out with a carpenter for like four years so you know I've been been out with like a lot of people that like know how to use power tools so if you're like a corporate office guy not interested uh, if you know how to use power tools and you build stuff for a living yes that is cool so anyway that's just you know you can only be my friend if you uh if you have a, um, a discount card to Home Depot <laughs> so it's like this meme that I saw I'll put on the screen it says uh doesn't have insurance but has a Lowe's card <laughs> so <coughs> excuse me oh my god I hate having my voice this way um now I'm going down this totally sketch area lots of rocks but anyway that said it is late it's like 10 30 I just slept in I did not need to get up this morning and uh yeah we were just talking about like uh travel and stuff and like places to go and like making like giving each other lists of recommendations so it's really fun to like sit around with like-minded people. When I used to internationally backpack, what was funny, so I'm going down this road right now. What was funny was that um, we'd all sit at the cafe and we'd all throw our passports down. This is like, you know, 20 years ago, I'd be in Thailand or something. We all throw our passports down on the table at the restaurant, like a bunch of strangers. We all just kind of join a table together. And, um, and then we'd all start looking at each other's visas. And we're like, oh, that's what a Chinese visa looks like. That's what an Indian visa looks like. And then we'd be chatting like, yeah, you know, I was in New Delhi yesterday and then I was over in Calcutta, you know, the day before. And then I was over in Kuala Lumpur the day before that. And it's just, sorry, it's just funny because uh, it's such a normal conversation for us to just be like throwing around international cities. Um, I can't have that here because if I go, yeah, you know, when I was over in like, you know, over in Tokyo, you know, then people just don't relate because they're like, where's Tokyo? I'm like... Never mind, <laughs> you know, Americans are like, that's so far. It's actually not that far. And that's something that we were, we were talking about yesterday on our hike was that, you know, you can be a tourist in your own town. You can get out and do stuff. Like a lot of people I know, they just sit around and they make lists of like bucket lists they never do anything with. It's like, if you want to go, there's a way to figure out how to go. Even if you just go for a day or a weekend or you find an equivalent to what you want to do. If you want to go, um, you know, if you want to go to France, but you can't afford to go to France right now, I mean, actually, it's probably cheaper to go to France than it is to stay in your hometown for a weekend and do stuff. Um, but if you want to go to France, you can like take a French cooking class in your town or learn something online. It's like you can always embrace the stuff that you want to do instead of just sitting around wallowing about how you don't get to do it. Because that's the kind of negativity that's really hard to be around when, sorry, excuse me, when I literally started a nonprofit to help people that really want to do stuff but they just don't have the means versus my friends back in Houston, for example, that definitely have the financial means to do stuff. They just sit around and bitch all the time. And those are the people that I cannot really be around. So if you're one of those people, I'm sorry, but we cannot be friends. <laughs> you know, it's like, it was nice knowing you, but I just can't be around that negativity because I know that just being in places like this, just being out in the world in whatever way that you can get there 
you know, maybe it means like, you know, you don't drink Starbucks for a month and then you get to save $300 and you buy yourself a ticket and go somewhere for a weekend. Um, there's so many different things that you can do to offset the cost of your travel so you don't have to save up for two years to go on a vacation. You just have to kind of cut corners in other places and realize that, you know what, I'll make my own coffee in the morning. I don't need to spend $7 on a, on a Starbucks as I'm about to go to Starbucks and spend $7 on a chai. Um, but it's my treat day. So I don't know, it's just like, even in Houston, like if I, I was home for four months in Houston and I still went out to the whole country, did a weekend trip here and there, uh, and then did, st did stuff during the day. That's why, you know, the videos weren't very exciting, but I did what I could do and it was great. You know, I, I went out to a few museums and I got to go to a couple different new restaurants and um, took the van out for a couple day trips to the state parks in the area and then rode my bike every day. So yeah, I mean, it was all, it all kind of, you know, evens out and um, yeah. So anyway, it was really good to like get some really good ideas and I had a bunch of pamphlets and things for the Kanab area. So Mark's gonna go out there and he's gonna go hike the sand caves, uh, visit Moki Cave, Belly of the Dragon, uh, Coral Sand Dunes, and then there's another one, another kind of slot canyon that he has a four wheel drive, so I can't get to it. Um, but then he went to like White Pocket, and then I told him about Peekaboo Canyon, um, which is also another one I can't get to, and I couldn't get to White Pocket either. So those are things that I'm on, that are on my list in terms of when I'm able to get there through someone else's vehicle or renting a four wheel drive, then I'll go back and do those. Um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, bounce some ideas off each other and we kind of all know the same people. So it's really, really cool. So it's great. And I was telling him too, like this year, since I'm done with the national parks, I'm not done. I'll still go back to a bunch of them, but because I'm, I'm done with my goal of going to all of the ones in the lower 48 and every all 48 states in the lower 48, um, that I don't have to go so fast anymore that I've literally spent out of the last month, I've spent about five days total in St. George. I've spent three days in Page. I've spent a couple days in Kanab. So it's really great that I'm able to just kind of slow down and take the time to really hang out with people this time and go hiking with a few other people rather than just solo all the time. And yesterday was great. I mean, we, we did so much yesterday. I mean, we went for Thai food in the evening and like I haven't had Thai food in, in well, I actually had it in uh, Salt Lake City, but it wasn't like, it was fast food takeout. But it's really nice to like sit down and have just a really nice meal and you know watch a movie like we watch Goonies like you know it's just it was like and that's the ultimate and then as we're watching Goonies I'm like oh my god I went to Astoria last year and I went to the Goonies house and I went to the museum and you know so that's now another bucket list item is to put that on the list of places that like you know he wants to go and places I've been so it's it's kind of like how how travel becomes part of your life and people think that travel is like this either unattainable thing or it's a thing you do once in your lifetime or it's a thing you do when you retire or it's something that you dream about but you never get to do and you live vicariously through YouTube or other people or it's something that you want to do but you just bitch about because you just have no desire to put in the effort to figure out how to get there to where you want to go but for travel as your own lifestyle travel is my life it's all I know it's what I've done since I was well since I was a kid I traveled with my family but it's all I've done since I was you know 21 years old as my own self-sufficient adult after college even though I was self-sufficient in college too I did a few trips with the school but 100% on my own from age 21 you know this is all I know and in between I've had digital jobs and I've had other corporate jobs and things but the ultimate goal is my life and travel has never changed it's always been consistent and sustainable and Everything else has been fluid and temporary, including like, you know, my digital career, which I pretty much stepped away from to do my nonprofit. So now, after 20 years of, of doing digital media, I've now figured out the way to make my hobby, which is travel, my job. And at the beginning for four years, travel was my job. I updated travel books like Lonely Planet, and I updated Google with travel information, and I wrote articles for uh, different, um, travel magazines and airline magazines. That's what I did for my career in addition to my job in Japan. So I had two careers in parallel um, and I had a ton of time to travel. So I got to go to like 40 countries. But when I, um, you know, now it's like, you know, I, I've always had travel as my, as my kind of like figure out a way to do travel as my hobby. And then in the last three years, I've been doing all the research, you know, just on my own to figure out the need that there is and then decided that you know I'm going to develop this nonprofit I'm going to get gas as well I'm going to develop this nonprofit because I feel that there's a need that I can fill that void 
with what I know about my travel, with all of my 20 years experience and being in the same situation as my demographic for the nonprofit, um, I know that I can make a difference in the world. And at the same time, I never have to work a digital job. At the same time, I will forever be doing Hike by Kalaika. I will be doing my nonprofit. And, you know, if you, when I get the website up, if you, you know, would like to donate and sponsor somebody that, would, you know, a veteran or a trauma survivor or someone that, you know, ha is newly disabled, you know, dealing with a prosthetic and wants to get back out into nature, there's a way for you to help so that, you know, even if you're not able to travel this week, but you have the means to help somebody else do it, <coughs> excuse me, then that's something definitely, definitely that you can do. And I would encourage it. And there's going to be some fantastic projects and fantastic places. Thank you.